right, I just got my dough out. Um, it's done with its rise. I'm going to shape this into, I'm gonna divide this into 10 pieces and roll each piece into like a little three inch long log and then I'm gonna let that rest for 10 minutes. Uh, and then I'm gonna roll them out individually and like fold them over, roll it out, fold it over, do that three times and then let it do another rise. So um, I will uh, show you what this looks like once it's all divided up and rolled out and then I'll show you um, the process of folding. All right, not the best angle here, but can you see, let me see here if I can, there we go. Okay, I'm trying to bring this back here a little bit. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna flatten it out, and then you'll pinch, you'll roll it in half lengthwise and pinch the edges up, pinch the seams. Then you're gonna roll it out one more time, pinch the seams. Now at this point, it should be getting close to six inches and it is literally exactly six inches. So then the third time you roll it out, you just roll it into an oval. And you do want it to be as evenly looking as possible. So not too lumpy an oval. Just double check that measurement. Yep, six inches. And there it is. And then you're just gonna put that on the pan. These are risen and I just sprinkled them with a little um, egg wash. And now I'm going to sprinkle these with poppy seeds because we are a Chicago family at heart. I'm gonna give them quite a bit. And then they're gonna go in the oven for 20 minutes. All right, just stuck those in and I'm getting started on the mac and cheese. We've got this going here. I'm about to add the flour to make a little roux. kind of hard to do one-handed. But I'm gonna stir this around for about a minute. Then I'm gonna add in the milk and heavy cream. Let that thicken up before I add the cheese in. And then I'll add in my, uh, my pasta. And then we'll top it with a panko topping and we will bake it for a half an hour. All right. And in goes the milk. And the heavy cream. This is the kind of mac and cheese you make for company and not like every day of the week. <laughs> mac and cheese, it's so rich. All right, gonna let that boil or bubble up for a couple minutes and then I'll add in the cheese. All right, it is time to add in the cheese. The kids are in the pool now and my dog is not happy about it. You wonder why I don't do more cook with me videos. It's because it's never quiet in my house. All right, we're gonna start with that much. Let it melt down a little bit. We are adding a lot of cheese to this. I think it's six cups total. I said it's okay if she's crying. Everybody knows what it's like to have a loud household, I'm sure. Yum. Perfection. All right, it's a cookout for Grandpa's birthday. We got um, brats and hot dogs and some fruit salad, some peppers and onions for the brats and some toppings for the... Um, hot dogs and that mac and cheese over here. So I'm making this and I like it because everything is just in one pot. It's really simple. So I just chopped up some onion. I'm about to start sauteing that with the beef and some garlic and this chili seasoning mix. And then um, everything else just starts getting added in. I really love this recipe because you just add the pasta dry and let it cook in the sauce instead of um, boiling it ahead of time, which saves a step. Yeah, buddy? Brizzo, I know, I saw Brizzo jumped up. 
Dinner tonight is chili mac. This comes from, I'll show you, an old Paula Deen Thanksgiving cookbook or magazine. And this is the recipe here. It, I've never been able to find this to share it with you guys. She doesn't have this written anywhere online. She has a chili mac recipe, but it's different than this one. So made that recipe. Um, and then we are having cornbread on the side and it is Sunday. So I will show you our dessert when I serve it up. All right, dessert is hot bubbly apple crisp, just fresh out of the oven with some ice cream on top. Feels like a fall dinner, mostly because we have a hurricane affecting our state right now, not because it's actually fall. So we're having like grainy dinners all week long. Okay, it is 3.30 and I just tossed in some ingredients for crusty French bread and I'll be making some soup around 6.30 for us to eat at seven with some French bread. Nice lighter meal tonight because we've had a couple of heavy dinners in a row, so a meatless Monday was on the menu tonight. Okay, so Brussels sprout soup is on the menu tonight and here are all the ingredients. So I'm just gonna chop up some celery and a couple of shallots and saute those with a little salt. I actually forgot butter at the grocery store, so I'm just using the butter spread <laughs> to saute it. Um, and then I'm going to uh, trim and chop the Brussels sprouts and add those in for a couple of minutes, and you'll see, I'll take a clip, they'll go from like a dull green to a bright green once they're um, you know, uh, sa being sauteed, and then at that point, I'll add in six cups, I'm doubling the recipe, so at that point I'll add in six cups of chicken broth, you can do this with veggie broth too. Let that boil for like 10 minutes and then you puree it all together and it's really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop all this up and get that. All right, veggies are, are sauteed, it's time to add in the Brussels sprouts. One-handed, hey, I did it. Awesome. And then I don't know why this part is like so mesmerizing for me, but I do love how after a couple minutes it just turns such a vibrant green. So that's gonna cook for a couple minutes and then I'll add in the broth. I hope you can tell how much more vibrant that got. Now I'm wondering if it's even showing up on the camera. Delish. I'm gonna add in, oh, they're playing a game. Guys, it's always so loud here when I'm <laughs> cooking dinner. You guys will have to let me know if you prefer this like cook with me style or if you just like me showing what's for dinner. Like, I know everyone's house is loud, but then it's like I don't want to watch videos of other people's loud houses when my house is loud. So, are you enjoying it or no? <laughs> Trying something new. All right, gonna let this simmer for 10 minutes and then I'm gonna stick it in. I don't have an immersion blender, so I just put it in my um, Vitamix in batches. That's it, no cream, but it turns really creamy just because of the Brussels sprouts, so. All right, gonna bring that to a boil and let it simmer and then um, blend it up. Yum. My house smells heavenly because the French bread is baking right now. This is the perfect rainy day dinner. Okay, soup is done and it is so deliciously creamy. And then I cut the bread. It's really perfectly crusty. Let me see if I can, can you just see? Look at that, perfection. Nice and hot and soft in the middle. Um, so I'm actually gonna cut these all in half again because they're pretty large, like, like the size of like sandwich bread. Um, so I'm gonna cut them in half so we can butter them and dip them in our soup. And as you can see, it's a very crusty loaf. Um, and that's it. No, I was gonna do a salad, but it's just, I'm just gonna keep it simple tonight. Soup and bread. And we are going to enjoy this rainy evening. It is taco night. We've got some tortilla land tortillas going, quesadillas for the kids. We, we're quite a mess in here today. We got meat and beans, toppings on the table. I figure you guys know how to make tacos, so I didn't do a cook with me tonight, but simple taco night this Tuesday night. Hurricane prep mode over here tonight. Okay, I am prepping a chicken teriyaki bake tonight. 
Um, so the way that this works is you saute some veggies. I'm using the spoon because I don't want to have too many dishes. Um, with the storm, we are starting to get the tropical storm force winds here where I live. I've got some brown rice ready to roll and then I'm making some teriyaki sauce back there. So then what you do is you saute the veggies until they're crisp, put them in a pan, and then you put a little pineapple on top, some crushed pineapple or pineapple tidbits. Then you put some chicken and then the rice and then you pour your sauce on top and then you bake it for about an hour. So it is a yummy chicken teriyaki casserole and this is a great one to freeze if you like doing freezer meals. I think you add chicken broth at some point as well. Um, maybe before you add the sauce on top. So I'm going to have to read the instructions, but that's what I'm making right now. I'm making the sauce right now. It's thickening up and then I've got the rice and the veggies going over here. All right. It is out of the oven and I um, took the tin foil off. Now you just kind of stir everything around and then put it back in the oven for about 15 minutes without the, um, foil on top and then after it comes out you top it with the rest of the teriyaki sauce and I'm in the middle of making a salad and then I think I'm going to I have some cookies in the freezer and we may lose power we're not so sure so we're kind of just going through some of our freezer stuff so I think I might put some of those cookies in the oven since it goes at the same time. All right, I have some monster cookies I froze them in scoops when I made the dough I didn't bake them I just froze the dough um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and take some of these out and bake them and um, you know just to make some room in the freezer in case in case we can only run one at a time on our generator we're gonna try if we do end up needing to um, if we lose power, we're gonna try to put everything in one refrigerator. We have two, one in the garage and then a deep freezer in the garage and then a fridge in our kitchen. Um, we're gonna try to put it all into one fridge and freezer and just run one on the generator. So, you know, I thought I would help us out with that and make some cookies. All right, so I have a salad here and then here is the chicken teriyaki bake. I'm actually mixing up some more um, sauce back there. I used a pan that was a little bit larger than a 9x13 and so I didn't really have much left to pour over the top. I added like some extra rice and stuff so I'm making some more teriyaki sauce to pour over the top and then we have some cookies. So I did make a rule that tonight you had to come to dinner in pajamas just because it's stormy and dreary out so we're gonna have a little dinner pajama party and watch a show with our yummy casserole and yummy cookies. Okay, we do have power today. So I'm making um, crock pot cheesesteak sandwiches. So I put some thin sliced beef in there, chopped up an onion. I've got some thin sliced bell pepper in there. I didn't have some of the ingredients, so I subbed. Um, I poured a cup and a half of beef broth on top and put some Worcestershire sauce and some seasonings, just some garlic. An Italian seasoning and then I'm just going to put a little salt and pepper on top here and then it's gonna go on low for about six hours and that's that. so one thing off of our to-do list today while we tidy up our yard from the store all right so I've got some rolls here that I toasted and I am going to mix this, whoa. Let me wipe that off. I'm gonna mix this up and get this on top of the rolls and then add some cheese and put them back in the oven for just a minute. All right, here we go. We're having cheesesteak sandwiches, I mean, Anybody from Philadelphia, don't come at me. They're like Pinterest cheesesteak sandwiches, a veggie tray, and um, we saved all of the chips from the barbecue that we had on Saturday night for this night specifically. So sandwiches, veggies, and chips. Happy Friday. We are having pizza tonight from our favorite little pizza parlor. It's actually really close to our house, and this is one that John John, did you grow up eating here? I sure did. Yeah. 
and my family lived in this town for a couple of years when I was a kid and then um, to open a restaurant, side note, my family owned a restaurant in this town, um, but my dad's job was back home in Chicago, so we moved here while the family restaurant was getting going and then moved back home to Chicago um, while it was being run and um, we would always go there when I, so when I lived here as a kid I went to this restaurant a lot as well and it happens to be right around the corner from our house so it's our where we are loyal to on our pizza nights so we do pizza night once a month or so because it's like seven thousand dollars to order pizza for our family uh, let me show you what so we the pizza isn't really what we go for we we have some kids who love the wings fries I actually didn't get garlic knots tonight this is my favorite salad like anywhere in my town it's just like such a normal salad but it's the dressing their dressing is so good um then we've got two different kinds of pizzas here and yeah a full feast this is a lot of food for our family so we will definitely be eating we definitely have it on um saturdays for lunch when we order out but it's one of those things like if you're gonna order out you may as well go all in on it so that is what we are having for our Friday night dinner. Okay, so dinner tonight, we have some baking powder biscuits and Mississippi roast in there. We have some smashed red potatoes in here made with butter and sour cream and broccoli. And then in the oven, we have dessert. And I will show you that okay, in a minute. Dessert is pumpkin espresso bundt cake. And this is a recipe that I used last fall and we really enjoyed it. So you can see like the swirls of the espresso filling there. And Annie, hold on a second, sweetheart. Um, I have the glaze here and I'm just going to um, glaze the whole thing with some, it's like some coffee and some sugar. <clears throat> it called for rum, but I skipped that part in the glaze. This is really yummy, served warm with some vanilla pudding on top. And that is exactly what we're gonna do.